Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And the star of the show today is that pillow. And I often, if I have the ability to, put the object in front of me that I'm trying to carve. Now I'm not gonna have the same ratios or anything like that, but it's just something to give me kind of an idea of what shape I'm going for. Because I know that this cake is going to be in the heat, my friend does not have air conditioning in her house, so I know it's gonna be quite hot. Plus, this party is going to be half outdoors as well. So I decided to opt for American buttercream just to give it that little bit of extra stability. And if you guys are curious about my buttercream recipe, you can go ahead and check that out in the right hand corner. I know if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I'm actually a really big fan of Italian meringue buttercream. However, because it's been summer and really, really hot here, I haven't been using it as much. I did have to time lapse this portion for you all because it would have taken forever if you watched me actually do this. I'm really taking my time with this because this cake is a 9 by 9 square pan and I don't want to lose too too much cake because this does have to feed quite a few people. So I'm just making sure to take off a few edges here and there. This is supposed to look like the pillow that the glass slipper is presented on, so I do want to make sure that it kind of maintains that puffiness. Now because of the way my cake's baked up, I will have to fake a little bit of that puffiness using the buttercream later on. And right now I'm still continuing to shave off those sides, being really careful again not to take off too too much cake. Carving cakes often leads to a lot of wasted cake or cake that you need to make into cake pops, so I'm really trying to conserve here as much as possible, which I feel a lot of us home bakers really, really need to focus on. And you can see here, I'm using that buttercream to sculpt that puffiness of the pillow, and we are going to place this in the fridge for quite a while. I place it in the fridge overnight just to make sure that I don't have any buttercream caving in when I cover this with fondant later on. Also a little tip, when I am doing carved cakes, I try to make sure that my American buttercream is a little bit thicker than usual, which means less water or milk content in there so that I get a really nice smooth finish. And don't worry about that bottom being too small and not having enough support. It really is just about tricking the eye. Now from the title, you can already tell that I had a little bit of a fail with this cake. So the big fail actually comes from the shoe portion. Now the reason that the shoe has a little bit of a fail is because I should have done this even more well in advance. It says in the instructions to do this 48 hours in advance. Honestly, I think I should probably have done this maybe even 72 hours, maybe even four days in advance. But definitely lesson learned, if I'm going to use fondant or a gum paste and make that into a shoe, I need to do it way, way more in advance. It also makes me really think that I should go out and purchase a chocolate mold that does the 3D shoe, because I know that chocolate is going to be a lot more stable. Now I inherited this shoe mold from a friend, so I don't actually know where to get this particular one from. It seems very uh, vintage and well loved, so I don't know where to get this, but I'm sure you can find other types of shoe molds. This one is pretty self-explanatory. You kind of just rest different pieces on each other until it fully, fully dries. And you'll notice in the beginning, I added a lot, a lot of Tylos powder into the fondant in hopes that that would make it dry faster, because normally it does make make it dry pretty quickly. I also added in that lollipop stick directly into the heel. And if it's any consolation, that really did stay together. It was other parts that didn't do so well. So I let that set for 48 hours, and now we are on to the day of actually covering the cake. So I used a speck of those two colorants to create this kind of Cinderella blue. Cinderella seems to have a lot of different blues going on in her movie, so I just decided to go with the one that my friend showed me in a particular picture that she liked. A lot of you guys asked me in the comments how thin I roll up my fondant, and I must apologize, I'm really, really bad with measurements and being able to say how I measure things out. So I will say that it's thin enough that you can actually see those buttercream imperfections underneath when I first lay it down, but it's thick enough that when I press the fondant in, it can have a little bit of give so there's no tearing. And again, a lot of you guys ask me how to prevent tearing. I often put some shortening into my fondant before rolling it out. Now you guys know I usually like to use my plastic cutter to cut this, but because I have a little bit of a weird shape here, firstly I went in with my X-Acto knife and now I'm going in with this little plastic thing to kind of tuck in the edges underneath. And I'm using my fondant smoother to get the exact shape that I want. And what's actually happening is, was my cake perfectly carved in that shape? No, but the buttercream really can be molded into the shape that you want. 
Now I'm using this super long bench scraper just to kind of fake the seams of a pillow. And the pillow that I was shown was very, very simplistic. It didn't have those tassels and all those things that you see during that time period. This is more of a modern but still glam looking pillow. Now I'm taking this impression mat, and the best way I find to use impression mats is just to kind of dig it in a little bit, make sure that you get really good coverage with it, but try not to press on those edges because of course we don't want the seam to be showing. We want it all to just kind of have that diamond pattern. And don't worry if not everything is super, super visible because I go back in with my bench scraper and kind of create this pattern. Now I have another tool that actually rolls so you can create this pattern as well, but I find that it's much easier to use something bigger that covers more surface area in this case so that all of the lines stay straight. Now when I was taught to pattern wedding cakes, I was specifically told not to dig in too much because we didn't want a rounded pillow effect. But in this case, we definitely want that effect. So I am enthusiastically digging this in quite deep and then I'm using my hand to just kind of make sure that it's rounded out a little bit more and that it's not too deep so that we don't see any cake going on there. Once I get to this stage where I can see the cake has really come together and most of the hard part is over, I get a huge sense of relief. But little did I know that that shoe had something else in store for me. And we'll get back to that in a moment. So as you can see, I'm going over this with a fondant smoother. Now I am working relatively quickly because if you don't work quickly enough, what's gonna happen is if you try to smooth all these things out and try to texturize it when it's dried, you're gonna end up with lots and lots of elephant skin. This is again where that addition of shortening when you're kneading your fondant is really gonna help you. It buys you just that little bit of extra time. Now I'm going in with this tool and you don't have to use this rolly tool like I am. Pretty much anything with a flat edge is going to work. Where all of those lines are intersecting, I am creating just this little T shape. You can definitely skip this portion. I find it does give it a little bit more of a pillow effect though. I'm also adding in a little bit of stitching with that little stitching tool. And then after I create all of these indents, I'm going to place on my pearls. Now you'll notice that I didn't place the shoe on first and then place the pearls on. I know it's just a little bit of extra work that might get covered up, but it's better to do it this way and put the shoe on later and you will see why. And this is a Cinderella princessy cake, so we cannot get through this tutorial without adding on some edible glitter. I absolutely love, love, love this glitter. I do miss the days of disco dust where it was a little bit chunkier, but I love this effect because it's edible. Now I'm going to be adding on the fabric. Now let's say you didn't want to add on the fabric to cover up this little seam here. What you can do is when you're originally cutting the pillow, leave a little bit more of a fondant edge on the bottom and then tuck that in. That way you wouldn't see any of this little seam at all. But I knew I was going to be adding on the fabric, so I decided I didn't need to be too picky with it. Now to get this fabric-y look, really the key is just to make sure that you roll it out super, super thin and then actually treat the fondant like you would fabric by tucking it and folding it and just making it look really, really natural. And to get all of this fondant fabric to stick, I did use a steamer so that everything would adhere nicely. Now I'm finishing up all of these things on the shoe and I'm just using some edible glue, which is basically Tylos powder mixed with some warm water and then you just wait till it dissolves. And don't worry about that little stick popping out a little bit. You can always cover that up with anything you'd like. And I'm going to be placing some flower detailing on my shoe. Now I know you guys saw a heart originally on there. I felt like it didn't really go with the whole vibe, so I decided to switch it up and I'm going to cover things up with these roses. And these roses are just made with fondant mixed with a little bit of Tylo so we get that really dry nice and quickly. And then I'm just placing it on. And once these details were placed on with edible glue, making sure not to use my steamer at all on this, I did let it rest for several more hours, as noted in the instructions. And now I'm taking a little bit of pearl sheen and I'm just airbrushing that all over. This gives it a really nice shiny look. Now prior to going to the birthday venue, I made sure that that shoe could stand up on its own on the tray for several hours. And then I tried it out on the cake and it could stand there. So I decided I will do the safe thing and I'll travel with it on the tray rather than on the cake to avoid any possible breakage. And once we got to the venue, I placed it on, I secured it with a little bit more of that American buttercream and I added a few more rosettes. However, despite all of my efforts, it was super, super warm and we needed to move the cake to a cooler spot. And that movement plus the incredible heat inside the house unfortunately broke the shoe. 
I wish that was somehow in the Disney story, but it isn't. Luckily, I did bring some extra things with me because I had a fear that that might happen, so I made sure that I put some rosettes on there as well as a bow to cover it up, and the birthday girl was none the wiser. Now when I use that mold again in future, I'll know to make it well, well, well in advance, even more in advance than I already made it. And hopefully that should do the trick. Probably in a future video, you'll see something like, I fixed my failed shoe or something like that. But let's get into the pricing of this cake. Now I'm going to preface this with the fact that I would not take on this cake order, mainly because I wasn't confident with the shoe and I only took on orders that I was confident doing and I knew wouldn't have any structural issues. However, if I perfected that, I would charge $300 Canadian for this cake. Now the price of this cake really is reliant on the fact that I would have to make that shoe well in advance. There's also a lot of detail that goes into that shoe element, as well as the carving of the pillow. And as always, my friends, pricing is different all over the world, so it's best if you look at my videos as a series so you can see the price differentiation between all of them. And a huge shout out to Cinderella herself. Go and check out her Instagram at Dream Party Productions. Now let's get into our subscriber submission of the day and you guys, I'm just getting more and more impressed with all of the things that you guys are doing. This is from at underscore Nancy Bakes. She made this incredible, incredible tropical cake. I absolutely love those flowers. So go ahead and drop her a like, drop her a comment and be sure to follow her on Instagram. And if you guys want to be featured on my next video, be sure to keep tagging me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram. Be sure to follow me and you can also message me the pictures that you would like possibly featured on this channel. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!